Ay, ay, ay. My goodness gracious. Nice. Hey everyone, welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids. Today we got the brand new Hammer Envy. So let's talk a little bit about this brand new Envy. Now, the cover stock is the Envy Solid, which was last seen on the Infamous. So in addition, we have a brand new core design as well. So this incorporates some of the pieces that were found in the Infamous and the Black Widow line. With all these things combined, we should see a more defined change of direction in this ball than the previous balls in this line, such as a Redemption Solid or an Obsession. Now, from what I've been told, this is supposed to be the strongest ball in the history of the Hammer line. But will it live up to that? We'll find out on the lanes. I'm normally the guy who does the hammer ball reviews, but I'm doing the intro today. So we have a special guest just for you. We got Mitch Hupe flying in from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Now he's gonna compare this new Envy against a ball that he really likes that he throws a lot on tour, this track Paragon. Both are asymmetric solids, but let's see how different they are out on the lanes. So for patterns today, we have 38 foot Los Angeles, a medium pattern, pretty flat. So we'll see how these balls kind of stack up on that one, as well as 44 foot titanium, which stronger balls tend to do really good on long patterns. So let's see how they do. A big shout out to our members who have joined so far. If you're looking for coaching, early access to videos, free merch, and so much more, hit that join button below. That's enough in here. Let's send it out to Mitch on the lanes. What's up guys, Mitch Hupe back, and today we got the brand new Envy from Hammer, the new oil tank beast. So I'm gonna stand further right for sure. Rule 31, break point maybe around seven, but on this, in this house where it hooks a little more, probably gonna get a little further right, and I'm just gonna really keep my hand at the back. Yeah, a lot of ball, definitely, rough about. Probably gonna move two and one off of that, just because it hooks, it hooks a lot. And gonna probably try and get around like five. I can actually probably slow down, which I didn't imagine I could do with that ball, but uh, yeah, let's see what slowing down with it does. So same spot, just gonna slow down. Still gonna try and get it basically as close to the gutter as I can right now. Oh, I got around it. Yeah, it's the one risky thing in using the bigger ball is if you don't roll it, it really wants to check mark. Same spot, just gonna make sure I keep my hand at the back. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna compare it to one of the more recent stronger ASIMs from the Brunswick family, back Paragon. So This has kind of been a staple in my bag recently. Let's see how it compares to the brand new Envy. So same spot. Yeah, ball is definitely a lot quicker off the spot. Just retaining a lot more energy than the pinup uh, Envy with the stronger surface, making it a little tricky to use on the shorter pattern. Let's go back to the Envy. You can see the Envy just wants to kind of roll off the friction rather than check mark off it like the uh, the Paragon. So I think I would probably move to a ball like the Paragon, maybe like two or three games after this, maybe one or two. So let's move another three left and we're still just gonna try and get the ball to the friction to the right. We have to make sure to roll it. Yeah, it's just very, really sensitive to uh, how it's coming off my hand. So unlike urethane, when you're on the shorter patterns, the urethane, because it's so controllable, it's not as sensitive to when you get around it or up the back it, versus like a strong piece like this, it's gonna maybe give you more scoring potential. You just kind of have a higher risk factor because it's such a strong piece. Okay, so let's move over to the longer pattern, 44 foot titanium, probably a pattern this ball's a little more designed for. Okay, so question time with Mitch. This is probably one of the tankier, most hooking balls that I've thrown um, in recent times. Question for you guys, do you think companies need to keep searching for that ball that outhooks the last one or should they maybe go back and just fine tune other ideas they have? Let us know in the comments down below. 
So on this pattern, I'm probably gonna stand a little bit further left, obviously not get it as far right. And as opposed to the shorter pattern, on the longer pattern, I kinda wanna get around it a little bit more. Not an incredible amount, but definitely a lot, uh, a lot more than on the shorter pattern. Kinda wanna look for a little bit more stored energy. All right, we're at 10 off the bat. Probably move one left off that, just get a little bit of a different entry angle. Nothing too crazy. Ay ay ay. Still a little bit behind the head pin compared to what I want, so maybe just slow down a little bit more. Stay in the oil. So I'm gonna move one left and slow down. I kind of like doing the combo move when I slow down. If I stay in the same spot and I go to the face after slowing down, it's my fault. Perfect. Okay, so let's go to the Paragon from there. Um, I imagine this ball is probably just gonna store a little bit more energy. I mean, it might strike, but it might also just give me too much of an entry angle where I'm like nine pinning or close to nine pinning. But uh, let's find out, we'll stay in the same spot. Just super quick off the friction. And that's kind of what I expected. That ball is usually like my second ball on the line. Once my tankier ball, my number one ball, uh, starts to kind of flat 10 or two pin. Usually a Paragon's the ball that I go to after that. So I'm just gonna move one left with it. Stay up the back a little bit more. Yeah, so like even that, it strikes, but it's not, it's not what I'm looking for right now. Kind of slap the four pin off the wall. So let's go back to uh, the Envy from that same spot. I just moved the Paragon one left. Cool. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's go back to the shop. Okay, back from the lanes with the brand new Envy from Hammer. And right off the bat, the ball hooks a lot and uh, kind of more than I actually anticipated. Threw it on a shorter pattern where I thought I could maybe roll it a bit more and, and get lined up with it. And then we threw it on a longer pattern where I thought this ball would kind of shine a little bit more. You kind of see the difficulty in throwing a strong ball like this on a shorter pattern. I definitely had to be pretty accurate and definitely up the back a little bit more. It was a little tougher than anticipated. Probably lean towards something a little weaker in, in cover for myself at least. And on the long pattern, yeah, I mean, it was fine. Uh, I think it may be a little bit too cover uh, heavy for me, but for somebody else's game who maybe has a little bit of a less rev rate, I could see it definitely matching up on the longer pattern. So comparing the two, the Paragon was definitely cleaner through the front, and I could just have to do with the layout. I do have a pin down light on this one versus pin up, so the pin up one kind of wanted to stand up a little bit sooner and just be a little bit more aggressive to the friction. I was like this where it hooks a lot. I think the Paragon kind of outshined just in terms of the layout. Um, I think if I did go with a pin down light on this one, it would have matched up a little bit better. So for me, I think this ball is maybe a little bit too strong, especially with the pin out layout that I went with. But if it were somebody with maybe higher ball speed than me and a little bit less rev rate, or somebody who just has less rev rate in general, I think this ball could really shine and could really give you those extra boards that you're looking for. Um, but again, for a guy like me, I just think it was a little bit too much ball for either this bowling alley or just for what I like to see in general. So to answer Bark's question to begin with, this is probably the most hooking ball I've ever thrown uh, out of the Hammer brand and maybe even out of the whole Brunswick brand. So if you'd like, answer our question. Do you think companies need to keep chasing a stronger and stronger cover and core ball as they go forward? Or should they just maybe make adjustments to some, uh, some weaker cores and cover combos? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next vid.